Hi, I'm Graham. And I'm Tanen. We are Crystal Street Comics, and welcome to Thoughts from Crystal Street, where if we released the day we were filming, we'd be bringing you brand new news. Yeah. But we're going to release this on Friday still. So, But awesome new news for me, the Marvel fan, and Dale, Tannen like Daredevil, so it's good news. The Punisher is officially part of Season 2, and it actually looks like he will be a major component of Season 2. Um, the logo has now the, the Daredevil name, but it's all shot with bullet holes. So, and with the announcing of the casting of John Brenthal, Brenthal, I'm not sure how you pronounce your last name. I'm sure it's a very nice last name. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, famous for The Walking Dead, um, which is a show, ironically, neither of us have gotten into. No, no. By the time that happened, I was already done with zombies. Yeah. It's like, I was, it, there's inundated too much yeah. and i just never cared to watch it yeah so uh i'm not super familiar with his work he was also recently in fury uh, and the wolf of wall street so uh i i've kind of learned to trust marvel's casting um you know of course there's that that small piece of me i was such a huge fan of the thomas jane film um we, I, I don't count Punisher Warzone. <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell you what, Punisher Warzone, because it, 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 you know I like to say some nice things. The first 15 minutes, whatever that opening scene yeah. in the mansion, are great. That's a great Punisher scene. And the actor, Ray Stevenson, was good as the Punisher. The rest of that movie's awful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was put together by the same people who did Ghost Rider. Yeah. Because it had the same... Yeah, Warzone had the same same feeling of we don't really have a plot here, so yeah. let's just kill things. Yeah, it 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 almost felt like a not nearly as good version of Dread or uh, the Siege. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it just but it was not nearly as good as either of those films. Uh, but this, I mean, this is fairly exciting news, and it's kind of funny because. Uh, I was actually on Twitter uh, the other day, and, and one of the people I follow is at Super uh, Movie Bro at Super Bro and Movie. I'll put your name under here and fix it correctly. I forget which order that goes in. But we were ironically talking about Daredevil and what you could do with the series uh, on Netflix. And he had mentioned uh, actually maybe trying to introduce part of Spider Man in there. And I thought that that would be a good idea. They've crossed paths several times, but that, I think they're going to save that for the cinematic. But I had brought up The Punisher because there is a very prominent story arc where uh matt murdoch actually has to defend Pratt castle in court uh, <laughs> and so i just thought that, that was a natural fit so when i saw this announcement today i was just that i was ecstatic yeah i mean it's it's a good it's a good choice for uh for daredevil i mean and that now i mean you're just adding another component of the marvel universe then into mm -hmm. the actual cinematic and tv mcu and mm -hmm. here's another character that people like uh and the daredevil platform is the perfect place to put him yeah and i would say as opposed to trying to give him his own show or movie mm -hmm. um because you're gonna run into i mean he he has a few of his own graphic novels that could stand alone mm -hmm. but you you still run into he's a really good ancillary character yeah he's a, he, he's a good spider-man mm -hmm. part, part of spider-man or part of daredevil yeah but by himself you're just getting the you get guys like the Jigs unhappy you get jigsaw and yeah and the russian right so so i mean he's he's got i would say there's enough to him that he won't become stagnant or boring as mm -hmm. long as he is part of somebody else's yeah. story. And, and, I mean, another really exciting thing, I, I know Fergie, a friend of ours, has talked several times about the Midnight Suns uh, being introduced. And this was, a, this was a Marvel group in the 90s, and it was like Ghost Rider and Venom and oh, yeah. Morbus. And, I mean, you could easily interject the Punisher into this group. Just it, generally going with a darker you know, probably wouldn't be a triple-digit million-dollar movie at the block, uh, you know, if you put it in the box office, but you put it on Netflix, and uh, Netflix will give you that money because they want some subscribers, and they'll get subscribers if they put that kind of stuff on, yeah. on it. So I, I think that this is, a, I mean, again, I, I couldn't be more excited. I'm, I love The Punisher. It's always been one of my favorite characters. Um and to see him get 
onto what is a, a fantastic show from season one. Um, I, I've got, I, I hate to put high hopes, but man, I got nothing but hopes for that. I mean, I, I there's nothing to make me pessimistic about. Right. It. Yeah. I mean, the the first the yeah it was done so well for the first season, and Daredevil has so many characters that yeah. you can that you can introduce, so you won't get. I mean, they're not hurting for uh, materia. No, and and we had mentioned that I, I think in the last one when we reviewed Daredevil. What's nice about him as a character is he does have so much of his own content that is really good and strong that uh, it, it's a show that, that's that got multiple seasons in front of it. And so to, to kind of instantly go into one where you're bringing in a, another major Marvel character, um, you know, I, I'd like to say, you, you know, people say you show the Superman logo, everybody knows who Superman is. You show the Spider-Man, everybody knows who Spider-Man is. I, I don't know many people who don't know who can't tell you that's a Punisher skull. Right, yeah. You know, they, they may not know what the hell the Punisher is, but they know that that's a Punisher skull. Um, so that's just fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and I would say with uh, the Punisher getting added to Daredevil, and if Daredevil can maintain, which I don't, yeah. neither of us think they, they can't, uh, maintain, you know, the high standards of season mm -hmm. one, you move that into season two, I would like to see, even though you just mentioned right before we started that uh, what Marvel CEO, yeah, not, it, not a big fan of the yeah. TV shows. This is a weird. I, I've read this in several places now that I guess Kevin Feige, the the kind of the big head of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, doesn't really like the TV side of things, and that just seems really weird to me. Um, I've read that it's you know he accepts it as a necessary evil because disney wanted the tv shows but i just think it's a chance to just do what you can't do with a cinematic universe which is you know in the cinematic universe at best you get six hours of story a year yeah with the tv shows you get 13 to 24 plus if you have multiple shows it, it allows you to fill in a lot of gaps that you it saves you time in your movies. Yeah, yeah, and, and I would say with with the success of Daredevil, and this is actually how I prefer to see it, even though they're yeah. not going to do it because he's too big a character. Mm -hmm. But I think Spider Man would work better. You, you've already tried, and yeah. you actually have made good money on Spider Man. But Sp eventually, you're either going to have to just write him into your MCU mm -hmm. cinematic universe and negate. His whole back. I mean, I don't want to see his backstory again. They they have said. Uh, I did read this that the new Spider-Man film will not be an origin story. Good. Yeah. I, I I'd imagine that you'll get a quick brush over of it. Um. The, the all the actors they've tested for Spider-Man are really young. Um. So they are going for more of a high school look, and we are again supposed to see him in Cap, uh, Civil War. But I, I they did say it won't be an origin story. So I mean that is good. But I agree. I. Again, we've touched on this several times. TV is such a better medium for superheroes. Uh, you could just tell so much more story. And especially those big characters that I know they want to put on the big screen, they would do so much better on TV because they've got so much more to draw from. Yeah. You know, if you had a Spider Man live action show, holy shit. Yeah. I mean, that's. I, and and I, yeah, the downside is once Spider Man gets his own movie in, yeah. what is that, 20. 17. 17 yeah um we've already and i they're, they're gonna have to i mean they've already said that they will um the topher or topher grace mcguire mcguire to, toby mcguire yeah. topher grace was bad was villain, a bad villain. Well, villain. yeah um but so you had toby mcguire and so net they're gonna have to and they've already said green goblin is not official okay not official not the, the rumor the is rumor. rumor is mcconaughey which would be really cool it'd be it'd be really cool it's just the downside is the first the first toby Maguire movies uh -huh. have already utilized these villains yeah and they a lot of them now mm -hmm. granted in the third movie they utilize all of them badly i um, I think Sandman was the only one used well in that. And what's sad is you didn't need any of the others. Right, yeah. He could have held that whole movie. Uh, but, no, yeah. I agree. No, that was waste. I, I, and, you know, at least give that credit to all the Spider-Man films. With the exception of the Green Goblin, 
who they barely kind of put back into uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two. Yeah, they never reused villains. Yeah, yeah. I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that through yeah. the five films. Just it's the downside is once you get to his own movie in 2017. Yeah, they, I mean, like they should with Tobey Maguire, they utilize some of the villains that they should use. Yeah. Doctor Octopus. Yeah. Green, uh, Green Goblin. I mean, these are villains that you're going to need. Yeah. And now you're actually utilizing this massive budget for this one movie. And the downside is a movie that people have seen less than 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, I, it will be better. Mm-hmm. I have no doubts that it will be better. But if you did the exact same thing, utilize here's a new Spider-Man story, or mm-hmm. here is the Spider-Man story, mm-hmm. and we're going to utilize Green Goblin and Doc Ock and all these ma- major characters, but on TV, it gives it a different feel, because yeah. you know that, yeah, I get 22 hour-long episodes, so they can actually delve into Spider-Man's problems. Yeah. The, the thing that makes Peter Parker a good hero, or a good character to watch, is all of the the stuff that happens when he's not Spider-Man. And the problem is, with a movie, it's hard to balance that. We need some Spider-Man, we need some Peter Parker time. And it all, in the end, both parts feel rushed. Whereas with a TV show, you could get, you know, like in Daredevil, you got a lot of Matt Murdock. Right. And then maybe at the end, you would get some Daredevil. Right, but, but you also... The TV show of Daredevil allows for the entire episode to go back and here's mm-hmm. the backstory of the Kingpin. Yeah. Where in a movie, if you give that much time to your villain, then it's going to start feeling like a villain movie yeah. and not your hero movie. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's something as in depth as Spider Man, and you could, I'm fine with having like Iron Man, Captain mm-hmm. America. These are characters for the mm-hmm. most part. Yeah, you get Tony Stark, you know, inventing, and mm-hmm. you know, and that's great. But for the most part, and he's still Iron Man. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not when he's Tony Stark, not in the suit. Mm-hmm. He's still yeah the same character. Same with Steve Rogers. I mean, that's you don't need what did Steve Rogers do on his off day. Yeah, <laughs> because it's not really part of the story. Yeah. Peter Parker. Those books are pretty much fifty fifty. Yeah, Parker. Uh, actually, a lot of those books are about sixty five thirty five mm-hmm. of Parker and then thirty five percent Spider Man. And in a movie. To make it engage engaging, mm-hmm. you just need the action. Yeah. So yeah, Spider Man would be a much better TV show than and it's already the MCU. Just yeah. I mean, now he's in the Avengers movies, or he's helping those guys, but he's also yeah down on the street. So again, that all that that was a nice little offshoot we went on to there, and that all stemmed from again. I, I don't understand why a disconnect between the two universes. You. You have a rare certain chance here to utilize this combined media like never thought of before. Oh, yeah. And so I really hope that they kind of figure out that coexistence again. And, and again, Punisher coming in season two of Daredevil. That's just fucking awesome. Yeah, that's going to be good. That's so. Way to go, Marvel. You're, you're, you're still <laughs> kicking ass. Real quick question for you, though. Just because of what you were saying about how Peter Parker books are weighed. So, by your logic, should a Batman movie have 5% Bruce Wayne and the rest of it all be Batman in a bat suit? Because that's how Batman comic books are. Uh, I would say, I would say eventually. I, I'm fine with the, um, like, Batman Begins, him mm-hmm. trying to pretend to be the billionaire playboy. Right. I, I liked how they did that because, you know, Batman pretty much, from the onset of his parents getting murdered, he knew that you know, he's got to become this thing. Mm -hmm. So Bruce Wayne, the Bruce Wayne persona is really, I mean, he's mentioned it numerous times in the comic books that he views himself as Batman. Right. Bruce Wayne is the, his alter ego that he has to, he has to pretend to be Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He's not pretending to be Batman. So, um, yeah, eventually, um, to get a very comic book, uh, correct, Batman movies, Mm -hmm. it's going to be, you get to see Batman without his cowl on when he's in front of the Bat computer, and he (laughs) just takes it off, uh, because his head is probably sweating. Alpha brings him a sandwich. (laughs) Yeah, Um, (laughs) because that's that's Bruce Wayne. I mean, you might have a few times where, you know, he, 
mentions some kind of board thing where yeah. he has to pretend to give a damn what Wayne Enterprises is doing. As long as they're making money, I don't really think he cares too no, much. I don't. So you hear that, Affleck? No mm-hmm. taking off the suit. Yeah. That, that, that's You're in the suit now all the time. Yeah. Now, I actually think this movie will be, I mean, I doubt I'm going to see a whole lot of Bruce Wayne. In this in this movie, I, he'll, there he'll be, be some, like, but I think this is predominantly going to be Batman. Yeah, I totally think he's macking on Superman's girl too, because you know he's fucking Bruce Wayne. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming for Lois. <laughs> so that went in all kinds of different places, but that's what Thoughts for Crystal Street is. It's our thoughts, just all over the place. So uh, I'm Graham. And I'm Tana, and we'll see you next time.